ADHD, anger issues, not being able to focus, not being able to control your habits, all sorts of things. Guys, I'm telling you right now, um, we filmed this episode a couple of weeks back and never did I think I would be introduced to something as powerful as this device called Mendy. I want you to listen to this episode at the end. I want to show you um, how this can absolutely change your life. Enjoy this week's episode of The Higher Self. Thank you for joining us. This week's episode of The Higher Self is going to change your brain. That's right. I'm here with Moha Ben Sophia. Yes. Yeah? Did I say that all right? Uh, you did. Beautiful. And I, you know, we were just talking before the episode about this wonderful thing you've created called Mendy, right? And I want I want to get into this in a second, but before we do, tell me a little bit about yourself. And uh I, I heard all kinds of great things. Costa Rica, Libya. Give me give me like your life story real fast. Well, thank you for having me, Danny. I love what you do. Uh yeah, so basically I'm uh I'm, uh, I've got Libyan roots. I grew up in Costa Rica, which is one of the most magical places in the world, as you might know. And uh, we were just talking about your experiences there. And uh, I just have always been um, just a, a very fortunate person in that I've always been kind of like a, a huge fuck up that's always gotten like kind of like Mr. Magoo. I've kind of always landed on the other side. I've always made it safely to the other side. <laughs> and, uh, and that's kind of the the life that I've had that has led me to this, to this stage that I'm at, where I'm so grateful to be a part of something that can actually help so many people. Beautiful. And so, um, you obviously have to have a passion for brain health, right? To get involved with something like this. Where do you think that passion came from? It came from my own limitations and my own issues, my own PTSD from my time in Libya, a lot of nightmares that I was having. Uh, you know, when you go, months and years on end without being able to get a full night's sleep because you're having, you know, nightmares all the time. And when you find a product that actually helps you and uh, to correct you, so I actually have not built this, you know, B Mendy was built by two engineers who are wildly more intelligent, more capable than I am. Two Swedish guys named Rickard Ekloff and Sammy Salijogi, and uh, they created it. And I was just kind of like the vessel for them to be able to get their uh, their creation into the hands and ears of people like you that can spread the message that they, and that can help us change a hundred million lives. I love that, man. I love that. I, I want to go back for a moment because you said you had a hard time sleeping. Yeah. W where did that come from? Because I know that that is an issue that a lot of people deal with. Mm. It's an issue that I dealt with. I, I went through a, a really tough period where for a year, I don't think I slept more than four or five nights. I mean, it was it was that bad. So yeah. I want to dive into that. Where did that come from? Right. So let's go way, way, way back. So I've always had a lot of anxiety. I've always been a very anxious person. And I've always had a lot of emotional regulation problems, which come from my background, my, my childhood. Uh, so I would get very angry very easily. I would be like a very irritable person. I'm a very kind person, a nice person. But I would impulse control was always like an issue for me. Uh, so that's stuff that I was carrying always. Uh, the anxiety would really come in because of the rumination that I would have if I was having an issue. Like I would just like overthink about it and it would just keep me up. And it's something that I always had from, like I remember through high school, you know, uh, for decades I've had this. But what really made the sleep issues become way worse was the war in Libya. You mm -hmm. know, after being in Libya and after, after your default becomes worrying about what's going to happen that night if you're going to wake up if something's going to blow up if something's coming in if you're going to get shot i mean that that must be that must be terrible it's very common amongst soldiers it's very common about amongst military people it's very common like that ptsd is a real crippling thing mm. and that's what made the sleep just become horrible and that's when the nightmares became much worse so that was about a decade ago when the nightmares really about 12 years ago the the nightmares really got worse and worse and worse i got it and what do you think started to help you with that? Well, the first time that I, that I encountered Mendy, so I had never even heard about neurofeedback. So I, everything happened by chance. It's kind of like Costa Rican jungle chance is mm -hmm. the reason why I'm here. Uh, because when you talk about if I've had a passion for neuroscience and neurofeedback and all these things, I actually never did. Uh, 
I am in some sort of sense a biohacker in that I train every day. I fast every day. I've been doing it for decades. I'm like one of those people that's, you know, I have this philosophy of life where I want to maximize pleasure. So I won't eat a meal that I, that does not make me happy. So I grew up, so I fast and I have this short feeding window where I will eat whatever I want. Like I have a candy room and, you know, I, I will eat a lot of sugar and I, I could have debates with how, people. How many hours are you? How many hours? I have four hours. So I've been doing a warrior fast for, for a long time. I used to do like six hours a feeding window, like a late lunch. And then that's gotten a little tighter as I've gotten older and I feel better and better. It's so interesting you bring that up. I have a one hour window, right? Uh, I'm just back from vacation. I'm, I, 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 I kind of screwed it all up there. But it was so interesting because I am in this place right now where I'm debating to go back to two meals a day or the one meal, you know? And as I was up there, I was like getting ready to cook and something just told me like, I'm not hungry, mm. you know, I'm not hungry. And I, I was able to just, you know, stick to the routine. Well, the know? important thing is that you listened. If we could go into this for a second, I know we weren't planning on this, but, but I, I, I really feel like this is a, this is a subject that could help a lot of people yeah. because you're absolutely right. It was like, I was there, I was about to cook a healthy meal, an mm. organic meal, but I, I literally was like, I, I, I think if you would have seen a camera on me, I would have, I was probably like walking back and forth in the kitchen. And then finally was like, I'm not hungry. Then you and, and, and I know that my body doesn't need food right now. Mm -hmm. You know, just what are your thoughts on in general, why we're so obese specifically here in this country? Well, basically it's because it's partly because of what we eat. I, I, I'm one of those people where I will, uh, I think I will piss off a lot of people because I have no problem with eating sugar. I don't believe in limiting yourself. I don't believe in any sort of diet. I believe in just eating what makes you happy, but I also believe in common sense. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be eating a lot of little meals all the time, those calories really add up. So for mm -hmm. me, it's about two things mainly. It's that I have a very important job. I have a job that a lot of people depend on. So I need to be hyper-focused. I can't half-ass my job. I don't get a day where I don't perform. I, because it's my responsibility. It's my obligation to the people that work with me who are stellar. So I need to try to keep up with them. Everybody on my team is better than I am. So for me, it's kind of like a sense of dignity where I need to perform at my best every single day to earn my spot on the team. And when I'm fasting, I'm a lot more focused. I tend so to true. relax and become completely useless when I eat. And uh, the second reason is that, well, it, it makes it very easy to have a six pack mm -hmm. and to feel great and to look good naked, even if you're eating ice cream and chips every day, as I do, wow. you know, so that's, um, that's really the, the, yeah. So I, I don't go into really deep into like autophagy and all these things. A lot of people talk about for me, it's like, I'm a little more basic than that. I'm gotcha. a little more Costa Rican than that. Like everything's kind of chill with me and it's, uh, it's just a common sense approach to yeah. it. If I'm eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I'm getting fat because I'm going to eat a big breakfast and a big lunch and a big dinner. So absolutely. Yeah. And in the long run, you know, it, it is common sense to me as well, because in the long run, you know, if your body, if you were to consider it to be a machine, the more meals you eat, the more that you use the machine, the more likely that the machine is going to break down. 100%. So if, you, so if you think of longevity, just from the basic common sense of what I just said, it makes sense. Insulin roller coaster. There's so much, we could go so deep into this, this mm. topic. Uh, but if we're going to go back to the neuroscience thing, so I mean, it's uh, basically my interest, I wasn't really very interested in obviously i knew i was sleeping terribly and i knew that i wanted to change that and i knew i don't feel great and that my workout sucked the next day and that i'm irritable but i wasn't really like obsessing about it and what happened was that one of the two founders of mendy reached out to me because he had seen me scale a company years before and apparently i was very nice to him at an after work i had had a beer with him and uh, he reached out to me and he started messaging me and saying, I've got this thing that's going to change the world. I've got this thing that's going to change the world, me and my partner. But, you know, when you're an investor and you're like a well-known investor like me, you hear that all the time. So I'm like, all right. And then I said to him, well, I'm going to be at WeWork at this time. Come show me what this thing is. And he came and he brings out this Mendy device and he goes, this thing will fix your ADHD, your depression, your anxiety, your lack of focus, your insomnia, your addiction. Your... And I said to him, wait, 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 that really sounds like snake oil. That sounds like bullshit. And then I tried it. I did a session. I ended up that same night. 
I ended up remembering my dreams for the first time in my life. Really? That same day after that, um, after that first session, and I'm like, oh, wow, this is something. Three weeks in, I remember I had a, an ex-girlfriend that came up to me. And she's like, why are you so nice? You're so pleasant. She's like, it's you, but you're just like more energetic and nicer and less hostile, less aggressive. Like I, 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 I tend to be, I tend to come off as aggressive, even though I'm very nice. I'm a very nice person. I'm a very kind person, uh, even gentle, but it just, you can't see it. I don't, I don't look like that animal, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Zootopia where the lion is actually a really nice guy, but he's a lion. He's scary, right? Uh, so, and, and then all of a sudden I'm like noticing, I'm like, wow, everybody's telling me the same thing. Uh, it got to the point where then my reading got better. Like I'm one of those people that I've never read. I'm not a big reader. Even right now, I'm not going to bullshit and say that I read. Like, I'm not a big reader. I only read things that I'm very interested in. Like, you know. I can and, relate to that. Yeah. And, and, but then I was like, I was able to sit down and read pages on end in a book. And I, I remember picking up the phone and, and, you know, calling my buddy Daniel and saying, I just read a book. And he's like, wow, that's insane. Like, you finally learned how to focus at age 40. And to me, it's like, wow, everybody should have this. Yeah. People shouldn't be struggling shouldn't be debating if they should pay the rent or get this. Like, so for me, that became my obsession. It's like, I need to get this into the hands of every person that needs it. You know, so it's so interesting you bring that up because that's how I felt about plant medicine. When I first sat with, you know, ayahuasca, when I first sat with mushrooms, and I'm saying this because I can relate to the passion that you feel mm -hmm. because that's the passion that I felt because it helped me in such a direct way with the issues that I was going on or dealing with in my life, even the issues that I didn't even know that I was dealing with, you know, it helped me in such a profound way. I remember, you know, joking with, I don't know who, but I, I, I remember saying something along the lines of, you know, if I could just get in a helicopter and have every human being open their mouths and like look up and I could just like drop it in. Change the world. It would change the world. Yeah. Because in essence, that's what, you know, take the mushrooms, for example. For example, if, if you really look into it, in essence, that's what the mushrooms do. Mm. The mushrooms help you to reconnect and rewire the brain. Right. You know, and it sounds like this is, this is what this is doing. Mendy. It comes from the word to mend, the verb to mend. Really? Mending your brain. So it's exactly the same concept that you're talking about with the mushrooms. So I, I, I have spoken about this. So I don't, I don't dabble with mushrooms or ayahuasca or anything, but I am surrounded by people. And that's because of my own experiences. I had an overdose back in the day and I, I have become very weary of, of most things. Sure, I'm understood. not against them though. And, uh, but I am surrounded by some of the people that I admire and respect and love the most and that I look up to the most and their lives are transformed. Like yeah, I have yeah. a friend of mine, a uh, very, very close friend of mine. He's coming to Costa Rica next week to celebrate my birthday with me. And he just did ayahuasca and this man is absolutely transformed. Incredibly yeah. successful guy, incredibly intelligent guy, but with a lot of trauma from a bad relationship who just got out of this traumatic relationship that he was in for 16 years. And all of a sudden he's like, I need something to fix this. And he went to Costa Rica and uh, he came back and it's just like, it's beautiful to see the peace. Like when I look into his eyes, there's a peace that wasn't yeah. there before. I know what you mean. Yeah. And it's, wow. Yeah. You, can, you can't debate that. You can't. You absolutely can't. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so tell me about this. How, how does this work? Because you're talking about, you know, ADHD, not being able to sleep, you know, not being able to focus. These are issues that a lot of human beings have. And, and, and I'm going to say it this way, even more are going to start to have because I'm a father. I see the impacts of social media and I see the impacts of the phone of course. on, on our children's, uh, um, shit on their vision on their everything and as much as you say you know and as much as i'm a conscious father and as much as i say you know i'm not gonna let them be on the phones anymore it's just it's a part of life now it's a, it's almost impossible the technology curve is so steep and you've got your kids have a brain that's very 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 similar to the brains of your ancestors and, you know, when life was way simpler, right? And all these tech companies, they're building in these layers of behavior to keep those kids more and more trapped. Uh, I was born in the 70s, so it, it wasn't as bad when I was growing up, but it was still pretty bad, right? But it's incomparable to a kid. Like a kid can't go to the bathroom without checking their TikToks. Like it's impossible. Like it's mm -hmm. just, it just doesn't happen because now we have become 
so allergic to being bored for a millisecond. So these kids, like the, you know, they need that, you know, that impulse, uh, you know, the, they need the, that, that little dopamine rush. The amygdala is always kicking at them. Uh, what Mendy does is it gives your prefrontal cortex the strength to override that. So impulse control is one of the biggest things that you can have. So that can be, you know, not basically losing your shit if somebody doesn't reply your text because you can be more reasonable about it and be like, well, maybe they're busy. Oh, well, it, it, it makes sense. Like, I'll go sure. on with my day. You know, like, we're always one decision away from a great life or a horrible life. Like, Absolutely. We're talking about, like, you could get out of a car and punch somebody and kill them, uh, literally, or, uh, you know, you stab somebody. Impulse control is everything. Like, many people, if they could go back and have one moment where they would have had more control in that moment, their lives would be substantially better and we would the, the world would be changed. Uh, many people would not be in prison, et cetera. When it comes to your kids, you know, when you post something, you wanna see the notifications, you want all those things, your amygdala is saying, give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more. A stronger prefrontal cortex, being able to control your prefrontal cortex, being able to control that executive function is gonna make you not worry about that and not care about that. So if you've been listening to my podcast for a while, you'll know that I'm a strong believer and advocate for plant medicine and its ability to awaken and heal the mind, body, and soul. It's a belief that is deeply rooted in my own personal experience with both ayahuasca and psilocybin mushrooms. And many of you for years have always asked me, you know, Danny, where do I go? Where, who can I trust? And there is only one place I would ever recommend or put my name behind, and that is Reunion. Reunion is a place where you could set yourself free from whatever is holding you back from living the life of your dreams. It's a beachfront, beautiful property that is in Costa Rica. And what I love about it is that it's not for profit. And this is the only thing that they focus on is the preservation and the safe utilization of these beautiful, wonderful medicines. And I only feel comfortable putting my name behind it because I am personal friends and have journeyed with some of the members of the facilitating team. Guys, I'm honored to have aligned myself with them to create the Higher Self Scholarship Fund. It's a fund whose purpose is in helping people who don't have the means to experience these medicines and yet have the desire to. And every time one of you books a retreat with Reunion, $100 from every booking is going to go into this fund and we will be sharing this money with people on a monthly and bi-monthly basis. So help me help others by using the code Danny Reunion when you go to register to experience your own life transformational journey. To find out more, go to reunionexperience.org and get ready. I'm going to be vulnerable with you Please and do. honest with you about something. Uh, and, you know, and, and I hope you guys as listeners appreciate this because I'm just going to tell you, like I always do, the raw truth. About a year ago, I was in the absolute best shape of my life. I was, I was, probably 15 pounds lighter than I am right now. Uh, you know, my, my jaws were all sucked in. I was muscular, everything. I was following my diet to the T. Right. Um, one hour eating window, I would break my fast with an amino acid elixir. I would take some amino acids, have, a, have one vegan meal, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. The problem is, is that at that time is when I was also going through a spiritual awakening and I wasn't sleeping. Right. So I was going through a dark night of the soul, basically, is what was happening in my life. Which, you know, I, I'm even prouder of myself that I was even able to get into that shape right. in the midst of all that. And then I fell in love. Yeah. And I met the woman of my dreams and we go to Italy and we start eating pizza and having a little bit it's of wine not here and there and, you know, a little ice cream and whatever. And I'm, and I'm starting to realize that there is a part of my brain, right? Because of my heritage and my background and because of the way that we eat, right? And because of the amounts that we eat, that it started happening to where even in that one meal, I started making it really, really, really big. Mm -hmm. And little by little, it's like the work that I had done started to go away. And I've been in this phase for about six or seven months where it's Math like- Math doesn't lie. No, <laughs> it just is what it is, yeah. right? Yeah, and so I and I'm in this phase for for about the last six months where I'm trying to find my way back, but I'm starting to realize that in my brain there is literally this relationship with food that like 
I need to somehow get over and adjust because I felt and I looked incredible back then, right? And I, I guess I just want to ask you, how could this help me? And as I'm saying that, what does your intuition say it's, is going on? And yeah. Yeah. Well, so basically being able to control your emotions and being able to, uh, th this is, this is actually something that is, is, was very interesting to me looking at the data from our users. Um, we have a lot of people that say that they were able to lose weight because they started using Mendy. So I'm sure they would. It's yeah. because all of a sudden they could control their portions and all of a sudden they can eat half the tub of haagen and not the whole thing. And that right. makes a huge difference. You know, that's the, the pounds will really drop very quickly. Uh, but yeah, basically being able to regulate your emotions, being able to have self-control, all these things again are connected to the prefrontal cortex. Mm. If we have a stronger prefrontal cortex, I'm gonna give you an even more radical example. There's a study being done in Sweden by Dr. Sten Levander on juvenile delinquents, where they found that the common theme between all these criminals is that they have a lack of oxygenated blood flow to the prefrontal cortex. So when you raise the oxygenated blood flow to the prefrontal cortex, they lose the impulse to commit crimes. So imagine if you had two sides of gangbangers about to kill each other and you could do that to them. It's kind you of like the heli helicopter mushroom analogy that That's you just it. made. That's it. All of a sudden, these guys are, are maybe not high-fiving and hugging it but out, I, but, but at, at least, least going their own way. Their, yeah, wow. So it's, uh, yeah, so you having self-control mm -hmm. uh, definitely would be a very, very big thing. Um, another thing that we speak about a lot and it, is addiction. Like, for example, there's a, uh, uh, I'm not going to mention him by name, but there's a UFC fighter. So the UFC uses Mendy, and a lot of the fighters are, are avid users. Uh, they use it in the at the PI, but they also use it themselves. And and there was a fighter that had reached out to me, fantastic guy of Latin descent, and he reaches out to me and he goes that he's struggling with two things, and he's struggling with a very crippling. And this is a high level, one sure. of the top, top, top guys in the world, ultimate athletic specimen and he couldn't stop chewing tobacco and he had a porn addiction and Mendy made him be able to stop. And he's literally asking me, he's like, How, like what happened? And I'm like, well, all you needed was you needed the ability to stop. It's like step number one is, and this is my, my thing with therapy is that therapy will tell you why you do the things that you do, but it doesn't really give you the strength to change them. It's like, if I show up and I tell uh, you know, for example, like I used to cheat a lot on like, and, and I, I went through a lot of therapy and I had, I'd had like a, a, a relationship that ended terribly that I feel I'm, I'm always going to feel very bad about it. And I remember I went to therapy and the therapist started explaining to me why I did the things that I did in the relationship with my father and blah, 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 and all these things and feelings of abandonment that it was never about the women. It was always about safety and all these things that is very important but that will not change your behavior because mm -hmm. it doesn't give you the ability to change your behavior. It's definitely an important step, but it's the same as if I get an alcoholic and I say to them, drinking the bottle of tequila is terrible for you. Go wash yourself and get a job. It's not that easy. No, they're going to say no shit. But exactly. Well, thanks. But how do I do that? Exactly. So step one is yes. They need to acknowledge that it's a problem because if they don't acknowledge that it's a problem, there's no beginning. But as soon as they do that, how do you enable them to succeed? How do you give them the strength to actually succeed with that goal that they have? And that's what Mendy will do. And how does it do it? By giving you more agency over the part of your brain that actually makes decisions, which is the part that will make it easier for you get out of, to get out of bed and go train when you don't want to. Sure. Because we are naturally lazy and we would rather eat haagen all day long and sleep than go out and do what we need to do. Sure. I love that. So how does this work? How does this work? By the way, you're the first human ever. Like I don't normally do like products. Right. So I, I really appreciate this. I, I feel as though this was brought here for a reason because it ultimately is the work that we do. Like ultimately what I, what I am here to do is help human beings discover their truest potential and heal some of the, the traumas and wounds that, that we all have, you yeah. know? And, and I have a passion for it just because that's the journey that I went on, mm -hmm. right? So you literally, as you're speaking, you're sounding like, you know, the medicine. It's, it's, it's kind of the same thing. So how, how does this work? 
So basically what you do is you put it on okay, and you do a 10 minute session every day. And what it's going to do is you're going to play a game. There's a mobile game that you're going to play. There's a lot of information with top scientists, people from Stanford, et cetera. You're going to get information. You're going to be playing a game. That game is going to reward you as you get better at playing the training game. So basically every time you get a better score on the game, it's because you are increasing the oxygenated blood flow in response to neural activity. So you're making your brain stronger. A brain that is stronger is a brain that is more capable. You're fighting cognitive decline, but at the same time, you're learning how to focus. At the same time, you're learning to control your emotions. You're just more in charge of everything. Um, and that's what you do. And you basically put it on. I just did a session on my way here in the Uber. So I'm sitting in the car, I'll do a session. It'll get me, it'll make the anxiety go away. It'll make you feel great. You know, I'm, I'm excited. I, that's my prep for this interview with you. Um, and that's what we do. The, the business model for us, and I've been called a communist before is now you pay under $300 and you get a device and it's a one-time fee and you get to use the Mendy and the software updates every week. So it's, so, it's so updating it's, all so the time. So I pay 300 bucks. 300 bucks. Yeah. I get the device. My, my dream is over the next five years that nobody's paying for it mm -hmm. because everybody should have it, whether regardless of their level of income. I am very anti-exclusive things. Like I am very for inclusivity. Uh, I was sharing with you, you know, the fact that I discovered this technology while being in the first world in Sweden, which was where I'm based. Uh, you know, and where I'm in the midst of like tech, the tech world, uh, to me that, that just shows me that there's no hope for somebody that's, you know, you know, a, a mom that has four kids in Mexico. Like what odds does that person have to have something that's going to help them? Like, so for me, sure. that's changing. That is the whole point. The business model is different in that when you have somebody, for example, that has ADHD, somebody that has depression, somebody that has the business model is take this pill and keep taking it forever. That's how pharma works. Uh, our business model is improve yourself as much as possible. And that's why I think you see the connection with the medicine. Improve yourself as much as you possibly can and go from there. Gotcha. Start from there. You know, it, strengthen yourself and then we see what's next and we find that many people don't need the doses that they need and many people get off of medicines we're not telling people to stop using medicine and we're not anti-pharma but what we're saying is that there is a technology that works uh when people talk to me about our competitors i would say our, our it's very similar to like the bench press that would be like our competitor it's like literally it's it's a training tool it's something that you should do a treadmill you know it's like that's basically who we, you know, it, it, that's basically the realm that we're in. Gotcha. Like we're, we're not in the realm of milking people for as much money as they have. It's about giving them a tool so that they can access the most important part of their, you know, of their body, their cognitive functions, which controls everything. But if, you know, if, if I can liberate you from that, like... There's always going to be the naysayers. Right. I mean, shit, half the time I'm posting, I mean, I think 100% of the time I'm posting stuff that is genuinely meant to help people. Right. And there's always going to be somebody that gets mad, you know, like, you know, 300 bucks to change your life is not, it's not that like. Well, I will tell you, and the beauty of it is that, uh, you know, when people, when we came out with this product, people were saying, oh, this is bullshit. This is never going to happen. They're never going to make the device because we launched on Kickstarter. Then we made the device. Then it's like, there's always people saying different stuff, but now we're getting that validation. You know, the science is starting to pile up. You can't rush science. It's like, I can't make cupcakes in 10 seconds. I can't like, you know, the oven needs to take as long as it needs to take. Right. And that's the thing with science. Like we haven't really, um, there hasn't been a lot of research done on this, but what we do know is that there's millions and millions of people out there. They exist that have used neurofeedback for the past 70 years. And these are people that have improved their sleep. For example, they have gotten rid of insomnia or migraines or ADHD. The problem is that we haven't really researched this. Right. And we haven't really, because there's really not been an incentive because these clinics, they'll charge, you know, a couple hundred dollars per session. You do 30 sessions. It's a good business model for them, but it doesn't really cover the masses like yeah. in my opinion everybody in the world should have access to everything it's a basic right that sure. you have 
Um, and we keep talking, and this is something that's troublesome to me. We keep talking about things like ADHD, like it's a superpower. I have ADHD. It's not a superpower. It's bullshit. Like it really upsets me that people are like, oh, I have the superpower of ADHD. No, you're fucking incredible. Even with the ADHD, mm -hmm. imagine if you could put that under control, mm -hmm. what would you be able to create? Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of like the, you know, if we had more control to, to harness the things that we want in the right way, it's a different world. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Hey, thanks for watching this week's episode of The Higher Self. The reality is, is if you're watching this show, it's because you are searching for more and you know deep within your heart and soul that there is more potential from your life. Maybe you desire true financial abundance and freedom. Maybe you desire to heal the fragmented parts of you. Or maybe you just, maybe you desire to attract the relationship of your dreams and be in a relationship with passion and true love. Whatever the case may be, that is what we specialize in. We specialize in helping you and guiding you to healing the fragmented parts of your life that have created these stories in your mind that keep you from living the life of your dreams. If you want to find out how we can guide you in that process, my mastermind inner circle does just that. It's a group of like-minded individuals that is wanting the absolute best out of life and will not settle for anything less. We get together four times a year in person and twice a month online. If you're in a place in your life where you're ready to discover your truest potential, then Inner Circle is for you. Message us the word Inner Circle right now on Instagram or Facebook at Danny Morell. Our team will message you back and begin to share with you the details about what it would take for you to join our Inner Circle. Message us the words Inner Circle right now. So I'm going to take this a different route um, because one of the things that our listeners love is, you know, all things, personal development, mm -hmm. all things, self-improvement. Right. And so you have an incredible business background, which I don't even know what it is. Right. I don't even know what you did or whatever, but you know, tell us about that. Right. And, you know, for those people that are out there listening and struggling right now, I'm a believer that the universe doesn't care how many zeros you attach to your financial goals. Like we are literally limitless, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd love for them to hear a story of success, um, particularly from you, which I don't know you, but it sounds like you said you were a fuck up, right? Yeah. And you were able to do something incredible. Right. So share a little bit about that story. I think I've always been very lucky in that I've been able to pick the people that go through the journey of life with me. And they happen to be, and I say this without trying to sound overly humble because it's, I, it's just the truth. They all happen to be just better people than me. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I've looked at it. Some of the most amazing people that exist happen to be in my life. And I'm just so grateful. And those people have afforded me 10 chances and 20 chances and 50 chances. So that's when I talk about being a fuck up that eventually gets it right. It's kind of like I had no choice but to get it right at some point because you're surrounded by amazing people at some point. You're going to do something that's in the realm of amazing just by default, just so, because you're in that room. So give me an example. I'll give you an example. So when I came to Sweden, obviously, so one of my closest friends is probably the most successful entrepreneur in the history of Europe, you know, and uh, just basically just seeing the way that he operates and he does things, you know, having started this unbelievable company, Spotify, right? And just seeing how, how clear he is about right and wrong and how morally sound he is. He's one of the better people I know. To me, it just got me into that state of mind of, wow, what he does is incredible. I want to get into that world. The problem is I'm not an engineer. I'm not a fucking genius in any sense of the world. What do I have that could make me successful and make me enter this world? And then I realized that I'm just, I'm a charming, cool guy that people want to hang out with. Like, I'm, I'm a good dude. Like, I'm a guy, I'm, you know, you could argue like uh, the kind of guy that you'd want to go have a beer with, mm -hmm. to give you an example. And I'm like, well, how can I monetize that? How can I make that? And that was the whole thing is like, how can I make money off of this? That's how it was in 2014 after my experience in Libya and my experience with ISIS. Uh, so I get to, uh, to Sweden and it was just like, well, how can I pay rent? And how can I pay for my stake? And how can I pay for 
for my travels and how can I live as a human being in Sweden? And uh, So 2014, you arrive in Sweden. Yeah, mid-2014. I get my first job August 1st, 2014 with a company called Fishbrain. And what I did is I, I have the gift of conviction. Um, and what I did is I reached out to a bunch of, like nobody really handed me anything but I have a problem with the concept of self-made because nobody's really self-made. Like I clearly I had a lot of help along the way, but in this journey, I did it by myself. What I did is I, I, you know, I got a little bit of advice from Daniel about what equity means. And I, he's like, what would you like to do? And I said, uh, what do you mean? He's like, well, money wise, I mean, you're broke. You're not going to be sleeping on, you know, in my house forever. Like, what are you, what are you going to do? Right. I'm like, well, I don't know. It'd be nice to get a job, make like $5,000 a month. So that was your goal? That was my goal. Yeah. And, and then he's like, what well, he said to me, he's like, well, the problem with making $5,000 a month is that you're going to be a slave to $5,000 a month. And because I know that you're awesome, I know that within six months, you'll be able to turn that $5,000 into $25,000. And then you're going to be a slave to $25,000 a month. And I was like, oh shit, what a perspective. So how do I stop being a slave? And he goes, you own the company that pays that salary. And that's how my obsession with equity began. And this is in, yeah, in 2014. So what I did is I was in Sweden and I reached out to like, I looked up some list of like the hottest new startups, you know, the next Spotify's, the next Skype's, the next whatever, next Klarna's. And uh, bottom line is I reached out to all the CEOs. I was like, hey, my name is Mohamed Sophia. I'm in town. I'd love to meet you. I think I can really do amazing things for your company. I didn't know what I was doing, but I'm confident. And I, you know, it's, it, you know, I knew that I would figure it out. You know, I'm scrappy, you know, like Costa Rican scrappiness. And then I ended up having these meetings. And one of the meetings that I had was with the CEO of a company called Fishbrain, which was like an up and coming company that was the world's biggest fishing app. That was their whole thing. Mm. So it's a, it's like a, like Tinder for anglers, except it tells you who caught what, where, and with what tide and what bait. And it's like, I use shrimp to catch a, you know, a snapper and blah, blah, blah. Got it. And I remember getting to this meeting. And the first thing I said to him is, hi, Johan, great to meet you. Uh, my name is Moha. And by the way, I know nothing about software and I've never fished. And he's, he's looking at me like, okay, why, why are we here? And then I said to him, and by the way, I'm going to need $5,000 a month and 2% of the company, I think is what I asked for. At this point, he's looking at me like I am absolutely out of my mind, but I said it confidently and you can get a lot done if you say things confidently. And I said, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to 10X you. I'm going to put a zero on your valuation. So if I'm full of shit, this is going to cost you $5,000. But if I'm some sort of secret rock star, I'm going to make you a superhero. Sure. And then I tapped into his ego. He shook my hand. Eight months later, I 10 x it. That was my first exit. And then I'm rolling. Then I did wow. another company. Yeah. And um, common sense, like I figured it out, right? And it was true. I didn't know anything about software or about fishing, but I understand people. You understand? Like, I love that. I'm a jungle kid from Costa Rica. I know how to interact with humans. I love that. So that was... Uh, so, I mean, if that doesn't but, explain but, that anybody can be successful, you know. But you know what the key thing you said? You were enough. Yeah. That's what you said. You know, and I hope you guys caught that because you, what you said was you literally said, you know, um, I'm, I'm a nice guy and people want to be around me and people want to have a beer with me. So how can I make money from that? Yeah. And I think that so many human beings have been taught to downplay who they are mm. and downplay their gifts and downplay, you know, I remember I owned a real estate company and I used to, I used to teach my people how to sell because I, half the battle was getting people to believe in themselves, mm. you know? And, and so, you know, you'd have these wonderful human beings who wanted to make money, who wanted to do good. Heck, a lot of them had good hearts and they wanted to, you know, help other people buy a home, you know? And I remember looking at them and I remember telling them like, grab a pen and a piece of paper and I want you to write down the answers to these questions. And I'd say, number one, are you a good human being? Yes or no? And they'd be like, yes. Okay, perfect. Number two, will you work hard for someone else? And they'd be like, yes, right? And number three, will you tell the truth? They'd be like, oh yes, I would tell the truth, right? And number four, uh, you know, um, will you, um, 
uh, will you show up every day, you know, for, for your client? Yes, I'll show up every day for my client. You know, and, and undeniably, everybody would always say, yes, 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 yes. And I would say, that's enough. Like, that's all you need, right? If you just know that you're honest, you're hardworking, you'll do right by people, you'll tell them the truth, right? Walk confidently. That, that's it. Yeah. And so many human beings have a hard time with accepting right. that that's enough. And all you did was say, oh no, that's more than enough. Like that makes me incredible. And I, I can, I can do something with this. Does that resonate with you? I, uh, but I'd never, I had never really quantified it that way, but that was beautifully put. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess that is what I was saying. Uh, I've never thought of, of in terms of, I showed up saying I am enough, but um, yeah, the, I guess that's what it is. That's and all it was. what I did is I, I kind of like proved to myself that I could do it. And it was a substantial amount of money that exit. And then I did it again. And then I did it again. And then I started doing it with more and more companies at the same time. And I realized that it was actually very easy for me to do my job, but that didn't mean that it didn't have value. It had a ton of value. It's just that it was easy for me. It didn't mean that it was easy. That's right. So it's like the best engineer in the world can design the best app and can have the best solution and can figure out the best blah, blah, blah. I can't do any of that. But what I can do, they can't do. That's right. There's a bartender out there right now that has people skills that are so amazing that if he could or she could figure out a way to get out from that bar and put themselves in the right place, that would change their lives and potentially the world. For me, location is such an important thing. Me being in Sweden, it was such an important thing because I could have been the same guy saying the same stuff in Libya and that would have gotten me yeah, nowhere. That would have rough. gotten me shot. Yeah. You understand? Like, yeah. so location is everything. Gotcha. And what brought you here to the U.S.? Um, well, I came to the U.S. because I, uh, I'm scaling Mendy now and I'm, I'm starting to tell people about, you know, about what this technology is because I, I feel that it's part of my duty to serve and to put this into the hands of everybody. I think that healthcare systems to provide this to people. I think that people should have the option of having safe, non-intrusive neurofeedback, FNIRS based, the highest technology. This is stuff that, you know, uh, you know, we collaborate with scientists at, in, in NASA, Prince, at Princeton, Stanford, like this is real science. This is not a gimmicky thing, right? And, uh, and we think that, that there is a world where people are not just medicated you know, having to take Ritalin because they can't focus and having to take this because they have ADHD, you know, bottom line is a lot of the stuff that we use, it's all connected to, to things that you can train. Beautiful. And that's what we want to make accessible to everybody. That's my purpose. I love that. And is this one mine or, or that was yours? Yeah. So, so I can get started today. You can get started today. I like it. I like that. Awesome. So where do people find out more information? Uh, Mendy.io. Mendy. They can go on our website. Okay. And um, yeah, just uh, order it there. Yeah. Download and a game on, on an app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can download the on your phone. On your phone. Ah, oh, sick. And and the the whole thing and and this is one of the reasons why I was called a a communist when I came into the company. The whole the whole business model was going to be that everybody would buy a Mendy. Like oh, like every home should have four Mendys or whatever. And for me, it was just like no, that's. That's bullshit. Why, why not just make a really sturdy Mendy that the whole family can use, That's like right. that the whole office can use. So right. the good thing is that uh, your wife, your kids, everybody can just have download the app on their phones and they can have their own login, their own stuff. Just use one device for everybody. Have it on the kitchen table, have everybody use it. I like it. And have everybody's life improve. I like it. I love it. Thanks so much for being here, man. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to playing with this because I'm a believer. I appreciate you, I'm a brother. believer for sure, man. That's it. This week's episode of The Higher Self. Listen, guys, go to Mendy. You know, uh, I don't think you've ever heard me. Have I ever said that? Have I ever pitched that? No, this is not even a pitch. This is just like, I know this works because I just, I feel that it resonates with me. And we will see you next week uh, on another episode of The Higher Self. All right, friends, that was this week's episode of The Higher Self. And I, as you can see here on video, I have my son, Aaron, with me. Puppy, say hi. Hi. And he is wearing the Mendy device on his head right now. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I've never come across a product. I was not expecting this. I never come across a product that can literally change your focus, change your habits. If you have anger issues, if you have, you know, ADHD, if you have a hard time 
um, um, you know, concentrating. Um, if you have, you know, if you if you have a family member who was in the in the war and is still struggling with all of that, I'm telling you, this is absolutely powerful. I started using it every day for ten minutes, and I just noticed so much more centeredness and focus. And then Aaron started using it as well. And what what do you feel, Bobby? What do you feel? What do you what do you feel when you use it? Uh, it's, uh, it's really relaxing. It's relaxing for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you like all the little stars, the way they come up? Yeah. And, uh, it's just like, I like kind of like melt down. You kind of melt down. That's what you feel like, huh? And that's truly what happens. You kind of, you melt into a, a state of bliss and peace. And so I wanted to do this. I wanted to come on the end of this episode and, and tell you that, I believe in this thing 100%. I want you to go to mendy.io right now to order yours. You can order one and your entire family could use it and it will transform your guys' life. And I got them to give us a little promo code. Just use the code morel 15 and it'll save you 15% uh, off of your order. It's the greatest gift you can give your family. Go right now to mendy.io and order your Mendy and order your brain health today.